Hello and welcome back. We have a very short video today to wrap up our neuroscience unit, taking a look at behavior genetics, which is the relationship between our genes and the environment, essentially the nature versus nurture debate. So this field of behavior genetics is going to look at the power and limits of both heredity and the environment on our behavior and our traits, essentially asking which has a greater influence on making us who we are. Is it our genes or is it our environment? So behavior geneticists might study something like our temperament, which is essentially our personality, our basic disposition. If we're overall cheerful and easygoing or irritable and fussy, why is that? And behavior geneticists believe that this has a very strong genetic component, that our overall disposition or our temperament seems to be highly heritable. It's something we have inherited. But how do we know that that's true? One of the ways behavior geneticists study the nature versus nurture debate is by looking at twins, specifically identical or monozygotic twins, because they have the same DNA. If identical twins are raised in two different environments, say they were separated at birth and adopted into different families, we can study and see how they are similar and how they are different to understand what the influence of heredity is on our behavior. If those twins are raised in very different environments, but they're very, very similar, that might give us some clue as to what type of traits we actually inherit. And so behavior geneticists are going to take a look at that biology, the genotype or genetic makeup we have versus the phenotype or the physical characteristics that manifest. And they'll study both monozygotic or identical twins and dizygotic or fraternal twins. And through these studies, behavior geneticists come up with what's known as heritability estimates which basically asks us how do we describe the degree to which a trait is due to the genes or due to the environment. So if you think about a class, for example, say this class, we have to ask ourselves what trait probably shows up in many different ways between the people in this class. One of the easiest things we can look at is probably height, because you might have in a single class individuals who are very tall and individuals who are very short. And the question is why? If we look at one class in one town, we can assume that they probably have similar, if not identical backgrounds, similar nutrition levels, similar education levels, similar air quality, similar water quality. So there's a lot of things in our environment that would be the same. So why do we see such a big difference in height? And you probably already know the answer to that. And you probably say because of their genetics, because those that have tall parents or grandparents are more likely to be tall than those that have short parents or grandparents. So we're going to be given a heritability number, and that number is going to be anywhere between zero and one. Heritability for height might be something like 0.8, which tells us that the differences in a population in height, for example, is 80% due to their genes and only 20% due to the environment. So the heritability estimate, that number is going to reflect the percentage of genetic influence on the differences in a population. This does not mean that your height comes 80% from your genes and 20% from your environment. That is not what this number tells us. This can only describe the differences in a population. So something like IQ, has a heritability estimate of about 0.5, meaning it's partially due to our genes, but also due to our environment. The heritability estimate for something like table manners would be 0.2, because there's not a lot of genetic influence on whether we're clean or messy. Typically that comes down to our environment, how we're raised and how we're told to behave at the dinner table. And so the lower the number, the more the differences in the population are going to be due to the environment as opposed to genes. A psychological disorder such as schizophrenia, which we know has a strong genetic component, might also be higher, like 0.8, because we know that in a population, the differences between someone having schizophrenia or not is mainly going to be due to genetic influence as opposed to environmental influence. 
So that's what heritability tells us. It gives us a number that tells us how much the behavior or trait that we see is due to genes and how much it's due to the environment. And the more similar the environment, the more similar a group of people's background is, the higher a heritability estimate is going to grow for that group. So for example, the heritability estimate of intelligence in the world might be 0.5. But if you look at a single school, the heritability estimate might be closer to 0.7 or 0.8. Gets higher because their backgrounds and because the environments are more similar for all the people in the same school compared to people all over the world, where there could be a lot of environmental reasons for why we see differences in intelligence, access to school, quality of care, things like that. So behavior geneticists are gonna look at that nature versus nurture debate. Evolutionary psychologists are also involved in this field of biology, because as we remember looking at the evolutionary perspective, this perspective is going to help us to explain why people think and act the way that they do in order to ensure survival of their species and their genes, essentially what's going to make them most successful to reproduce and pass on their genes to the next generation. The one criticism of evolutionary psychology is that they are constantly using hindsight bias. They only explain behavior after they take place. If we say behavior like aggression is adaptive and helps us survive to fight off our enemies, we cannot predict who's going to be aggressive and who's not. It's only after the fact when we see someone acting aggressive would an evolutionary psychologist say, well, the reason they're doing this is because it helps their survival. So they can't predict behavior, they can only explain behavior after it's happened, which falls into that category of hindsight bias. That's the end of our neuroscience unit. By now we've looked at the neuron and neurotransmission process, different neurotransmitters and how they communicate in the nervous system, different parts of the brain and their function, how our brain can change over time and how plastic it is. And now we've taken a look at the influence on our genes and the environment on what makes us who we are. I hope this gives you a greater appreciation of the biological side of psychology and how our brain and DNA help contribute to who we are. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, be kind to your mind.